Okay, so let me uh, finish the verse down here. So three, six, um, and a tree, same number, I don't need to decode that, and a tree to be desired. So let's, let's start over with that. Genesis 3, 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant, lusting to the eyes, and a tree to be desired. Wait, what? 25, 30. Uh, delight, desire, goodly, lust, um, to desire, to, cover, to covet, to take pleasure in, to desire, to be desired, greatly uh, desire. Ah, desirablenessness. <laughs> that's the me. Okay, so that sounded what? Now she's desiring a tree, and to make one wise. You put the word um, human or man right. into tree. Exactly. That's what I'm trying to get at. So that's what. See, we got it. We got it. We got to read the Bible from understanding in the days of the authors what was their vocabulary. And, and how did they think about things? And if we and if we don't do that, then so many of the prophets don't make sense. Isaiah, it's really it's really easy to get confused in Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, big time, Job, big time. You know, it's 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 really that's why I'm going to break those down. I'm going to I've been now that I understand enough about the Hebrew and Greek meanings of this. It's like wait, what? Now everything's changed. It's just, it just is. Okay, um, let's finish on verse six. Tree to be desired to make one wise. She took. Three nine four seven. Um, to carry away, fetch, to enfold, to mingle. Um, let's look at the Greek. To mingle. This is seeds mingling now. And we know that in uh, what Daniel uses those words. Uh, here in Greek, to take in the hand, to take and carry along, to take from, to take out, um, to take for a person to procure, to take possession of, to select and choose, to take in marriage, to lead, to conduct, to take, to capture, to seize, to take in vengeance, to be removed. Here, I'm going to hopefully point out to you, they leave the garden, they get married and have sex. Basically, this is where I'm going with this. Um, but it, it took me so long to get there, and it took me so many different ways of looking through the concordance to get there that I think it would be tedious for you guys, but this is what's happening. So I'm just giving you, because you can go look for yourself when you have time, but I'm telling you, this is this is what happened. I had to go in to a different part of the concordance and figure out some of these um, meanings. And once I started putting it all together, it's like, wait, what? These guys got married. Uh, because honestly, Eve doesn't have sex with Adam until Genesis 4. All right, let's move on. It's going to get better. She took of the fruit thereof. She took of the fruit. She took his seed. Okay? So here, fruit. The number is 6529 Hebrew. Fruit, fruit produce. Offspring, children, progeny of the womb. Oh, she's not eating fruit here, guys. She's having sex with Nakash. A fiery flaming serpent that had that was on the divine council and had access to the garden. She got pregnant right here. In Genesis 3 6, she's pregnant. All right. When she starts talking with God, when she has to explain to God what she did, that's when we'll find out from God what he has to say about this. Okay, so let's wait. We're not there yet. Of the fruit thereof, and did eat, consume, devour, 398. And gave also unto her, and gave also unto her husband, with her, and he did eat. Now he gets admonishes for obeying the woman, but wait till we see. Um, we don't, let's just go ahead and jump to where God confronts Eve. So I'll go ahead and read the rest of it here real quick. Genesis three seven. And the eyes of them both were open. They knew that they were naked. They sewed fig leaves together, made themselves aprons. Uh, nothing to decode there. It's all what it says. Three eight. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. Nothing to decode. It's just what it says. 3.9. And Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? 3.10. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. 3.11. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that that should, should not eat? 
312. And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest be with me, and she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. 313. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled, and I did eat. Okay. Serpent 5175, Nakash, beguiled me, 5377, to lead astray, to delude, to, to seduce, deceive, um, to deceive utterly or to deceive greatly. Okay. Well, hold on. Where was I? That was 313. And I did eat 398, consumed devour. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Nakash 5175, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed. Cursed is 779. Um, to curse, to be cursed. Above all cattle and every beast of the field, upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust, 6083, um, this is clay, earth, mud, ashes, dust, earth. Okay, that's us, guys, because Adam was returned to dust. Here, Satan and his crew are given legal right to eat us, fallen man. They can drink our blood and they can eat us. That's all they can do. They were cursed upon eating cattle and every beast of the pit, uh, every beast of the field. They can't eat God's creation, but they can't eat us because they cursed us. Okay, three fifteen. Okay, Genesis three fifteen and three sixteen is where it gets really important. Genesis three fifteen, and I will put enmity three four two, hostility and hatred between the between thee and the woman, 802, it's just female, and between thy seed, now let's look at this, between thy seed is 2233, it is um, a carnal child, a seed sowing off the, the uh, Greek, okay, in, in Hebrew, it's a carnal child, in Greek, it is um, offspring, a sowing a seed, semen, viral, Okay, this talks about the waters of Genesis 1. Semen viral, offspring descendants, um, children, and then sowing time. Okay, between thy seed and her seed, 22, 23, and it shall bruise thy head. See, let's just look at bruise, 7779, shall bruise to crush, gape upon, desire, seize, and strike out. I wouldn't have called bruise desire, but that's what's happening here. Bruise thy head, 7218, and it just means that head. And thou shalt bruise, desire, his heel, 6119. That heel thing is going to become important when I get into the next study I'm going to do on the blood. Because that, that really is. This this little, this, what seems to be kind of innocent here, when you understand heal properly, it's just going to change your paradigm once again. Every single time you guys do the study with me, I'm, I promise you I'm going to shake up your world a little bit. Okay. And now, 316. And to the woman, he said, I will greatly, let's look at that, greatly means to increase. I will greatly multiply thy sorrow. Now, this is really important right here. Sorrow, thy sorrow is 6093. And Hebrew is labor, pain, sorrow. And Greek is pain, labor, hardship, sorrow, or toil. Okay, multiply thy sorrow. This is really labor. And thy conception, okay, different from conceiving. It's going to be very different when we get into Genesis 4. And thy conception, 2032, physical conception, pregnancy. Here, so back back in 3.6, she's having sex with the Nakash. And here, God is saying you're pregnant. Are you following me? In sorrow, this is a different sorrow. Right here, different sorrow. In sorrow, this, this sorrow is 6089, an earthen vessel. Painful toil, grievous, idle, hear that word, idle, labor, and sorrow. In Genesis 1, 
Whatever that creation is, is a phantom, it's an illusion, and it's a vain idol. Now, Eve is pregnant with a idol. All right, let's look at the Greek meaning. Pain, hurt, offense, hardship, vessel, creation, idol. This is very important. Are you guys seeing the importance here or is it just me? In sorrow, 6089, thou shalt bring forth. Three totally seeing it. Yeah. Okay, so bring forth is just that, born. Uh, show lineage, bear, begat, birth. Okay, so nothing. The children, this is important. Thy shall bring forth children. This is 1121. All right, 1121 is a, again, an arrow. First thing it says is arrow. And I had to spend some time. It's like, wait, what? what's going on with this arrow thing? We'll get there. I don't know that we'll get there today, but we'll get there. Um, and then it talks about everything that God's hate. Assyrian, Babylon, Egypt, Greece. Um, a Here's where it's interesting. It says a mighty man, an old people, a rebel, a robber, a servant, a soldier's son, spark, a stranger, tumultuous one. Um, and then Greek says... Um, sons of God for angels. And then it says, of lifeless things, i.e. sparks, stars, arrows, a member of a guild order class. Okay, this is, some, this is a seed that's... See, Eve has a seed in her. She's pregnant. She's got a seed in her that is not potter's clay. Let's put it that way. It's not potter's clay at all. It's a vessel... But it's not, it's not a Genesis 2 vessel. I hope, I hope you're understanding that. If not, at the end, we'll, have, we'll, we'll, we'll talk. But let me just finish this out. Okay. Bring forth her children, 1121, and thy desire, 8669, of beast to devour. <laughs> How does desire become of beast to devour? All right, and, and thy desire, here's where we get enslaved, right here. Genesis 3.16 is the enslavement. Because here God is saying, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule. What? To thy husband, 3.76, says just what it says, male person. Then he shall rule, 49.10, to have dominion, to reign, to rule, to have dominion, to cause, to rule, to exercise dominion. That's Greek. The uh, Hebrew says dominion, governor, reign, have power, rule, have power. Well, women, you just lost your rights. Do you see the enslavement process starts here? And he shall rule over thee. And then 317 and Adam. Um, here, Adam, basically the rest of this is Adam is cursed because he obeyed the woman. And so now all of a sudden thorns and thistles spring forth and, you know, now you've got to work hard to till the land. And then Eve is given a name in 3.20, Genesis 3.20. And Adam called his wife name Eve because she was the mother of all living things. And unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them. 3.22, and the Lord God said, behold, the man has become one of us to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. What God's saying here, Lord God, what God's saying here is he has become cursed. He is now a fallen man. And if he were to go back into the garden and eat from the tree of life, then he could not be redeemed. There's no redeeming. He's, he's now, if he ate from the tree of life, he would live forever as a fallen man, as one who can continually sin, who can choose evil, who can become a hardened heart. I've already broke all that down in Hebrew, and it's going to be too tedious for me to take you and show you in all those places where that is. But that's, that's what this is saying here is what the rest of the Bible, if you look at Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, um, 
and some in the, the minor prophets are mostly about revelation. All the minor prophets, you can break that down to revelate all the book of revelation. But in the, in the major prophets, this is what these guys are talking about right here. And they use it through the heart and heart, the arrows, the, the jackals and the hissing and Jeremiah. I mean, you just have to understand if you really understand uh, 322, you understand that man cannot be redeemed and that all of the prophets are warning you about this race of people that can turn you into, I guess I would say, either food for this immortal race that eats us and has legal right and only can eat us, or turn you onto their side in which you hate and mock God. Can we say all the rock stars, all the movie stars, all the media people? We know who these people are. You can see it in their eyes. And, it, and again, eyes, understanding the whole fountain, the whole knowledge thing. Um, there is a race of people throughout the entire Bible that can never be redeemed. But they are a huge race of people. Okay, I'll finish out. So Genesis 3.23, Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the Garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. 3.24, So he drove out the man and he placed him at the east of the garden. So what's important here to really understand, whenever somebody in the Bible is going east, they're going away from God. So whenever, this is what east of the garden means. When, whenever you see someone going east, what they're really telling you is they're going away from God. Cherubims and a flame cherubims. I'm gonna just three seven four two. This is an angelic being, guardians of Eden, flanking God's throne, an image form hovering over the Ark of the Covenant. Okay, and a flaming. Let's look, flaming. Uh, an angelic sword. So flaming here is the number three eight five eight. Is a flaming enchantment. The that's what Hebrew says, flaming enchantment. And then Greek strong, flaming of an angelic sword. What's important to know is this race of people, while they are fallen angels, this whole witchcraft thing is very real. They know, they understand supernatural um, knowledge and witchcraft is way real. And it is, and right now, guys, I can tell you, um, the witchcraft that's in the satellites today the entire earth is being, um, I don't know, say the word, I mean, God uses the word cursed, hexed, um, but this now satellite technology. All right, let's finish up Genesis 3, 324. So he drove out man, placed him in the east of the garden, cherubims and a flaming sword, which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. If it wasn't for this right here, we could never have been redeemed. We would have been thrown to the vampires, period. All right, let's go to Genesis. I think we should stop there and discuss what we've talked about. You guys want to chime in? It's a lot. It's it's a lot to take in. It's a lot. Yeah, to, it's a lot. It to is think, a lot. It is. It's a lot to think about. Wait, what? The whales? Um. It, God didn't. Nowhere in Genesis two did God make any sea animals. He just did it. And the sea animals that you read about throughout the Bible is always a monster. It's sea monsters, it's sea dragons, it's Leviathan, it's sea... I think in one place it's a crocodile, and I think it's Ezekiel. Now, so we already see uh, Eve has got a seed in her. Eve has... God tells us Eve is pregnant. She has conceived... But here in Genesis 4, 1, this is when Adam and Eve have sex. Genesis 4, 1, and Adam knew. So knew is a Jewish idiom for sex throughout the Bible. And one way to prove that is when you read about King David and they gave him the pretty young girl to keep him warm because blankets were not keeping him warm. He needed body temperature to keep warm. And, it, and it, it goes out of its way to tell you, but he never knew her. He didn't have sex with her. She just kept him warm. All right. Four, Genesis 4, 1. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived. Now, this is a different letter. This is 2029. 20, she conceived. 
to become pregnant, to bear, to be with child. All right. And bear Cain. This is really strange. I don't know why anybody does that point this out. Bear um, here in this context of bearing Cain, let's hear what it says. Um, childbirth of distressed, of wicked, to beget, to be born, to bring forth um, a wicked bringing forth iniquity. So here we've got like, now we're bringing forth iniquity. Okay, she bare Cain. Let's look at Cain. Alexi wants a, a definition of iniquity. Yeah, what is that? Okay, I'll get that. In, I'll, I'll go there in a minute. Definitely. <laughs> um, okay, Cain. Guess what his name is? Means possession. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Cain means possession. Okay, let's finish four one. And Adam knew Eve and his wife. She conceived and bare Cain and said. Now, this is the strangest sentence. I, I still can't quite get this. I have gotten a man from the Lord. Wait, what? I have gotten a man from the Lord. Not from Adam. Oh, let's break it down. I have gotten, 7069, to create by extension, to purchase to provoke, to jealousy, to possess. Okay, the, that's Hebrew. Greek, to get, to acquire, to buy or possess, to obtain, possessor, Eve acquiring, of knowledge, to be bought, to cause, to possess. What the heck is... That's not a baby. What is that? That's not... Okay. Are you guys thoroughly enjoying this? I hope because this is like, come on now, one verse, yes. one verse. It's like, wait, I what? <laughs> Hold on, I got to decline that call. So here, let's let's reread this. Genesis four one. And Adam knew Eve, his wife. She conceived and bare Cain, possession. And said, I've gotten, a lo I've gotten a man from the Lord. Okay, here the Lord is 3068. And this is actually um, saying that this is the, the eternal Jehovah, Jewish national name of God. So it's a proper, it, and Jehovah in Greek means the existing one. So I guess... Our eternal Lord God allowed her to bear Cain. But it's just odd that she says, I've gotten a man. And I'll let it, here, a man, 376. Did I read that? Um, yeah, it just says man. Male, husband. Okay. So let's read Genesis 4 2. And she again bare his brother Abel. All right. Abel is. 1893. Guess what Abel name is means breath. Now I already went through and showed you. Wow, that's great. Yes, exactly. I'm glad you're catching. Yeah, so I already showed you Genesis 2, um, 2 7, breath in the nostrils. It's repeated identically in Genesis 7 22, breath in the nostrils. The only thing that died. In the flood was those that received breath in the nostrils. Genesis 1 race did not die. That's because Genesis 1 race can either sh can shape, angels can shape shift. Angels can appear to be whatever they need to be. They can, they can become sea monsters and survive in the waters of Satan. Okay. So here Abel is something different from Cain. Cain is something that is, his name means possession. Now we can go look up possession and we can look up. So we name. have Cain with the, uh, meaning possession. And then we have the breath coming into Abel. And we know Cain killed Abel. I mean, come on. 
Oh, yeah, okay. and then you can read, I've already read all of Genesis 4, and the main thing to point out here in Genesis 4, let's just scroll on down. All right, let me go to, well, we all know Cain kills Abel, and God, mm -hmm. and then, let me, let me get to it. Hold on. Okay, so Genesis 4, 11, And now thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. 4, 12, When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. So a fugitive, let's look at that, 5, 1, 2, 8. It means... Um, to stagger, to wander, to wave, to vibrate, to swing, to toss about. That's what fugitive means. And a vagabond is 5110. A vagabond is to wander, to flee, to disappear. Okay, so 413. And Cain said unto the Lord, my punishment is greater than I can bear. And then in 4.14, Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid, and I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth. And it shall come, come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me. Okay, we're, still, we're, we're just now getting out of the garden, guys. Who's all out there to slay him? Do you see there is a race of people in which Adam is protected to in the garden. If you go look up garden, and I can go back if you want me to, but garden. I mean, this is a question that I had, you know, I've been in, I was in religion a long time. But I have never, it has never felt that somebody had a new Christian has always asked this question of Bible study, but who were the other people and how did they get there? That's right. Tell, and that's what, you know their aunt, you know what the main answer was from the elders no what um typically when they didn't know how to answer such things they would always just say well some things aren't meant for us to know that's not true it's all there in the bible and that's why i know it's all right there it's all right there now genesis 1 is a race of people before genesis 2 7. genesis 1 is a huge race they're immortal they can create these are creator angels now, they can create all kinds of races, and um, they, they, they um, uh, what's the word I want, shapeshift, and can become sea-faring creatures. You'll find in some Psalms, I don't think I have time today to get into Psalms, but I did earlier, uh, and I went through Psalms, it's like, wait a minute, this race of people is talked a lot about in Psalms, it's talked a lot, you just have to understand um, the, the language of the authors. If you don't understand the language of the authors, then, then, you know, if you don't take time and you find all of the Hebrew and Greek numbers and look this stuff up, it's really easy to just, just gloss over. So now why was Adam, Adam is of God. Why did, why, if Adam, when you look up garden here, let me go back. Let me just go back and, and tell you garden. Let me go back here. Um, to Garden of Eden is going to be in, in Genesis 2. So let me let me go back to Genesis 2, and I'm going to give you the number so you can look this up yourself. Okay, so here. And the Lord God formed man, and God planted a garden. Okay, Genesis 2, 8. And the Lord God planted, let's look up that number, 5193, um, to plant, to establish, to be planted, to be established. Okay, that's what plant means. A garden. The garden is 1588, okay, garden, 1588, a, a garden fenced in, a garden enclosure, enclosed garden, um, garden of plants, garden of Eden. So it's enclosed. It's not just garden. Here in this context, both in Greek and Hebrew, it's a fenced in garden. That's why the cherubim is at the gate. So this is an enclosure. And it's an enclosure because Adam had to be Adam and Eve had to be protected, number one from from uh, the Genesis one race. Like they can't get in there. However, Nakash can, because Nakash is. We find out in Job one and in Job two that the devil and his fallen angels can still enter the third heavens. 
they can go they still have until you get to revelation 12 the the in revelation 12 they're, they're kicked out of the second heavens but right now they're in the second heavens and they can go to and fro from the third yeah. heavens that's how nakash got into the garden he took it I don't have time to go into it today, but he took Eve out of the garden to a desert place. Yeah. And there's a and I can go go and, and find that for you, but I already did all that yesterday. Um, they didn't even have sex in the garden. The cash took her out of the garden and they had sex in a desert place. I found that while I was trying to look up uh things to do with sea monsters and Leviathan and all of that. I came across, I was like, wait, what? Oh my gosh. So so here, so let's go back to Gen 4. Hold on. Let's go back to Gen 4. Okay. Let's go back to Gen 4, down here, verse. Okay, here's the first mark. You know, the Bible is all, everything that happens in Genesis has to happen in Revelation. So it's all a foreshadow. So our first mark. So, so. Cain, in, in, in 4.13, Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. 4.14, Behold, thou hast driven me out. Basically, uh, anybody who will find me will slay me. In 4.15, And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, who, uh, whosoever slayeth Cain. Okay, now the Lord's saying that, the Lord's acknowledging, Yeah, there's people outside this garden that's going to come after you. Right? He's saying that. Therefore, who, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. Okay, we're clear about this, right? There's people outside the garden gates. So now Cain has the first mark. Cain, the possession, the wicked one, the one of the devil, he has the first mark. Do you see the foreshadow here? Uh, 416 and Cain went yeah. out. Yeah. 416 and Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod. Okay, you look up Nod 5113. The land of Nod means wandering. Uh, vagrancy, the law, the land of Cain. So the land of Nod on the east of Eden. On the east means away from God. On the east of Eden, here let's look up Eden. That number is 5731. Eden, 5731 Hebrew, Eden, the region of Adam's home. Greek, meaning pleasure. Eden means pleasure. The first habitat of man after the creation. So now let's go to here. He just left Eden, and in verse 417, and Cain knew, Cain had sex, and Cain mm -hmm. knew his wife, and she mm -hmm. conceived and bare Enoch. Enoch is 2585. And Enoch was Eve. Huh? Enoch was Eve. Enoch, yeah, Enoch was, was the first son of Cain. Oh, Cain. Oh, I thought you were talking about Eve. I was like, wait. No, no, no. Oh, no, no. No, no, no. Okay. Yeah, so Cain, oh. Cain leaves the garden. He marries, he marries this, this tribe, this people of Genesis 1. Because Genesis 1 never died. And after that, they survived because they are water creatures. Right. That's why they keep saying watch the water now. Huh? That's right, Don. They do keep saying watch the water. But think of this. Um, wh wh why is there such a... Think about this. There is such a, such a description of God... In, in Genesis 2, 7 and in Genesis 7, 22, he's very clear. I breathe his breath, God's breath, into the nostrils and, and made them living souls. Okay. Fish don't breathe air. This, this, that was never given to Genesis 1 because they survive more in water. There are crocodiles. Crocodiles can go in and out of water, but these guys, most of them are probably sleeping in water at night. I'm just saying. Eggs. Um, there's a whole lot of predictive programming now uh, on um, octopus and squids. Sea yeah, monsters. I thought. Big sea yeah. monsters, yep. So the rest of Genesis 4 
is basically lineage. And we get down to, to the last one. Let's go to Genesis 4.26. Well, no, let's go to four. Let's go to Genesis 4.25. And Adam knew his wife again. Adam had sex with his wife again. And she bare a son called his name Seth. Seth is number 8352. And it means compensation. The third son by Adam and Eve. So compensation. And he hath appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain slew. So God compensated Eve um, because Abel um, was killed. So in 426, and Seth, to him also there was born a son. He called his name Enos. Enos is 583. And Enos simply means man. And then... And then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. Now, these are people that are of the Lord God. Unlike Cain. Cain's line is um, the evil, wicked one. So, let me let me take another... Let me hear feedback from you while you guys look through my notes here real quick and make sure I haven't left anything out. I think I made it really clear about uh, Genesis... Three, and where she receives the she has sex with the Nakash, receives the seed, is declared pregnant, and then the son. It just and the, uh, my thoughts on that later in that is you know I've often wondered many times why in the Gospels and in the Book of Numbers chrono, the chronology of like the bloodline and. And leading up to the birth of Christ, right? Right. Oh, my goodness. You know, you do the read the Bible through a year and all that. And you're like, blah, 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 blah. And they've got this and they've got that. But now I'm getting aha of why it was so important to see the generations in the line of Christ. Right. Because of that serpent seed. Exactly. With that serpent seed, right. now we can read the Bible with a whole different understanding that... Um, that serpent sea can make all kinds of races because in the, in the, in the, in the Noah, if we want to jump ahead to Noah, let's see here, let's jump ahead to, uh, let me read, let me read my notes here real quick. So Cain possession, 6914 is where I find a place in the desert where they journey to. So, um, if you guys want to look that up, when I was talking about Nakash actually took Eve out of the garden and he took her to a place called Graves of Desire. It's a place in the desert and its number is 6914. And it means to journey, to camp, to depart, to journey, to camp out in the desert. And, um, okay. So. I've already explained the whales thing. And the Leviathan. Is that one of the, the foundations thing? The whales is such a... Uh, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Who knows what that is? Exactly. Cool. Oh, and so also, uh, what I learned um, years ago when I did some Bible study was that... Um, God's anger with Eve was about her being corrupted and his bloodline being corrupted through her ignorance or whatever. Correct. And um, that was the main reason why she got Seth was so that there would be a bloodline for Christ to come through. Right, exactly, exactly. It's a it's a it's a two seed war. This enti the entire Bible is a seed war at, to, until the very end. It, and now it's gonna they're gonna come after us with with um, what do you call it needles? Um, it's a piercing. It's all about because you find it in Genesis right there in the beginning of Genesis. You find this um, reference to arrows, and arrows also means swords, and it also means the lion's teeth. That's why you find the lion's teeth so much. I mean, it's just like the Bible becomes actually really easy 
what you understand, there's 10 different things to describe one action or one person or one, you know, event. I mean, you just, it, 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 you, you got to understand there's such a huge time period between the authors of the Bible. The language is different. The, the context, the, everything about it is, is, is more understandable when you, when you um, start breaking it down to the numbers. If you don't read the Bible by the numbers... Um, it's gonna. It's just terribly difficult. I'm gonna jump over to Genesis six now. A question, real quick. Go. Yeah, go. So the line of Cain, since they came through Eve, are they alive? Do they have souls? No, they're they're possessed. Oh, okay. So no, they are. They are. Um, they have to be. Cause that's the reason that by God already made the lake of fire and sulfur because they have to be consumed with fire. They can't be killed. There is an immortal race in Genesis 1. Um, Cain was possessed. Cain came straight from the devil. And there'll be another will come again. But to say the line of Cain, um, the line of Cain is cursed. Um, and and I've done, I did that in another Bible study. Once you understand that the word Pharaoh means to disperse and to spoil. And the word Egypt means sons of Ham. And you understand that Cain's line and Cain's direct descendant, Cain's daughter, married Ham. And Cain's line, Cain's seed, cursed seed, Cain's cursed seed got onto the ark and they made it out alive. But Cain's cursed seed, so Cain himself was possessed by the devil. Cain's cursed seed made it out into, uh, and, and, and his daughter married Ham, and Ham has Cush, and if you look, and so if you look up Ham, if you look up the, you know, you gotta wonder why, how many, how many times the, uh, the uh, prophets talked in a way. Uh, for example, they'll use the words Pharaoh and Egypt because the prophets understood that Pharaoh means the evil one that wants to disperse and spoil. So they've always been after our seed line. They've always been after our blood. They've always been after our DNA. They want to destroy the name of God in our DNA. And so when you hear the prophets say the Pharaoh and the darkness of Egypt, you're talking about idols. So all of Egypt is idols. And the Pharaoh is the king of the idols and the pharaoh is the one drinking the blood and doing all the witchcraft magic and all that stuff and then you look at egypt egypt means the sons of ham and then you look up a, a hebrew word for egypt is mizraim and you can also see the land of cush and cush is the son of ham who had nimrod who was a mighty man. Nimrod became a mighty man. So they were able to resurrect their supernatural knowledge, right? The, 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 the immortal race of Genesis 1, the, the little gods, however, they're supernatural, they're angelic, they're big, right? They're giants. And, um, and they were able to um, teach Nimrod how to do what he did before God came down and destroyed that, the Tower of Babel of Genesis 11. Okay. Did I answer your questions? Yeah. Okay. Genesis 6, 2. Okay. Genesis 6, 2. That the sons of God here, that the sons, 11, 21, you got to understand if you don't, if you read sons without looking at the number, you're not understanding what we're, who we're dealing with here. So the sons, 11, 21, because it's not always, you can see son of like Abraham and it's not 11, 21. Okay, here sons is saying, it's the Levites, it's the Assyrians, it's the Arrows, it's the Babylonians, it's the Egyptians, it's the, it's the, the Grecians. They're literally telling you, and then it goes down and it says, um, mighty, old people, old, that ancient thing I'm trying to get to, is this ancient race in Genesis 1 could have been here millions of years before Genesis 2. Millions. And because they do require water, if you, if you were to read, NASA just put out an article today that, that Tom sent me, 
put out an article today saying we have now have an uh, an office, a department with with its one hundred percent of its job is to study UFOs with the um, with the emphasis on the ones coming in and out of the water. I'm telling you that this whole water thing, we are we are a water system, and I'll, I'll, that's going to be a different study. I've already done the yeah, study myself, but we're a water system. Um, okay. The garden, the, yeah, living, yeah. the living waters of the Garden of Eden, yeah. we are meant to be in a water system, not blood. Blood is satanic. The flesh of the blood is satanic. Okay. Um, and that's a different, that's a different day. I'm not going to go into that. But here, sons, sons is 1121. Let's finish out the description. Um, mighty, old people, rebel, robber, soldier, son, spark, steward, stranger, Greek says, um, sons of injustice, sons of unrighteousness, sons of God for angels, lifeless things, i.e. spark stars, arrows, a member of a guild order class. These things don't have souls. This is what it means by lifeless things. And you know, stars are angels. They are lifeless. They are immortal. They are powerful. They're supernatural. They're a member of an order and a class. That's true. Angels are, they are classes of... The entire angel is an army, and just like in our military, we have orders and classes, so do the angels. The angels are built for one thing, war. Or there's a, there's a class of angels that don't do war, like Gabriel. Gabriel couldn't find, go look at Daniel 10, 13, all right? Gabriel couldn't fight the devil. He's not made for war. My, Gabriel was held up 21 days by the Prince of Persia, and Michael had to come and free him. So he could then go to Daniel and describe Daniel his his dream. You guys know that one, right? I don't have to explain that. And, and if I, and I will, if you want me to go more into it, but that's something that I've, I've the amount of- I'm depth, familiar with it, but I don't know about anyone else. We'll talk about that afterward. Let's, let's go to, let's, let's finish up Genesis, um, where I want to go with that. And then I want to look at, um, some more of the crocodiles and sea monsters. Okay, Genesis 2. That the sons, 1121, okay, those are not men. That the sons of God, God here, 430, Elohim, saw that the daughters, 1323, just that. Now, here's what's interesting. Always when you read, when you're reading the Hebrew numbers, always when it's talking about humans, whether it's male or female, you're going to hear... Uh, branch, twigs, limbs. We're trees. So once you understand that we are trees and every single metaphor, everything that comes from a tree is talking about us, you can understand um, a little bit better. Okay, so here. That the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took, 3947, um, took means to be captured to be taken away, to be removed, to be taken, brought unto, to be stolen and taken captive. Well, okay, so there was no, uh, what's the word I want? This is enslavement, basically. You know, they didn't, they didn't come down and ask dad for their, their daughter's hand in marriage. They took them wives of all of which they chose. And the Lord said, my spirit shall not always drive with man for that he also, yet his day shall be 120 years. There were giants, 5303, the Nephilim. It just says giants, the Nephilim. A bully, the Hebrew um, meaning is a bully or a tyrant giant. There were giants in the earth in those days, 3117, and that just means a period of time. And also after that, 310, and it just means that, after that, afterwards. So here, let me look at my notes and get what I'm, okay, so here, 6-4, Genesis 6-4, let's go here. Unto the daughters of men, and they bear. Okay, here, bear is different from Genesis 2 and 3. 
well, Genesis 2, God just made Adam and then out of Adam made Eve, but Genesis 3, really. Here, bear is 3205. And this says, to bring forth childbirth of distress of wicked behavior to beget, to be born, a wicked bringing forth of inequity. Well, let's go ahead. Here's inequity again. Let's go ahead and look at what that means. Hold on here. Let me see. What, what do I need to... Okay, so let me go to Strong's here. Hold on. Iniquity. Okay, so Strong's Iniquity is the number 5771, and it means, hold on. Let me, let me, uh, let me open that up. Okay, so here it says wickedness, inequity, evil derived, which, which evil derived from, which refers to pain resulting in toil, then drudge, uh, criminal, and then it goes through some, and it goes through where it's used. Um, Matthew, it says, proceed their malice, their wickedness. Jesus, um, the malice of them. So in Mark, it's used, in other words, it's looking at how else is it used other than iniquity. In Mark, it's all wickedness. In Luke, it's wickedness. In Acts, it's um, wicked ways. And then the rest of them look, and then in Ephesians, it's evil. So those are all the words. So inequity can be evil, wickedness, wicked acts. Um, that's the way it's used in the Bible. So. Okay. All right. So let me go back to, where was I? Okay. Let's go back to Genesis 6. So here, bear is begetting wicked. See, if you don't look at those numbers, it's really easy to gloss over. And like April was saying, the church elders are just like, oh, well, you know, it's not for us to know. It's there. It's just that they're so they're too lazy to actually read the Bible. It is for you to know. And God's going to make you work for it. You know, he wants you in his word all day long anyway. Or at least three times a day. There were giants. I think I already read that. Tyrants in the earth in those days and also after that. When the sons of God, sons 1121... God, 430, Elohim. You start memorizing these numbers and memorizing the meaning of them when you spend enough time. Came into unto the daughters of men. So men, 120. So this man, 120, again, this is not Adam's race. Now, Adam, once he fell, became the number 120. But in Genesis 2, when you read about Adam, he's 121. He's potter's clay. And so you have to understand that whole potter's clay thing when you go throughout the rest of the Bible. Um, but, but but then once Adam was thrown out, he became 120 again. This 120 is a hypocrite man. It's not a man of God. It's a man that now knows good and evil and can choose evil and his heart can become hardened. So, <coughs> that's who that is. Um, what else did I want to point out here? I wanted to go, I already pointed out Genesis 7.22. Only the, the things that God made was destroyed in that flood. You guys get that, right? The, would I make that clear or not? The Genesis, yeah. the Genesis 1 race did one of two things. They shape-shifted into a crocodile, sea monster, whatever thing. They lived in the water. Or they went in as giants, as Nephilim. All right? Because there's that Nephilim. There's a different sea. There's a Nephilim sea, too. There's Genesis 1. And then there's... Genesis 6, the Nephilim, it's a, total, it's a different seed line. But those giants were able to either get up really high and survive the flood, or they went into caves underground. And that's the next, you know, I'll prove that they went into caves underground. And you can go throughout Psalms and find these giants in caves under rocks. And it, that's a long read because Psalms is 150, you know, 150 chapters, so... Okay, now, 
Let's go to Jeremiah 14, 6. One, one of the things I have written down here. So let me... You can read Jeremiah in a just much different way. Um, now understanding some of this. Okay, Jeremiah 14, 6. <laughs> And the wild asses did stand in the in the high places. They snuffed up the wind like dragons. Their eyes did fail because there was no grass. So Jeremiah, in his language, jackals and wild asses are the same thing as the sea monsters in Psalms. Okay, so let's look at this. And the wild asses, 6501. Um, here in Hebrew, I don't know what the word onager is. I'd have to, I don't know what that word is, actually. It says onager, O-N-A-G-E-R. I'll have to look that up. This may not have been a good, um, but what I see here, um, this uh, did stand in the high places, 8205, a bare place. Bareness. Okay, here in high places actually mean bareness. But I mean, that's it's a totally different context. <clears throat> it makes sense to Jeremiah, but it doesn't make sense to us. A bare place, a bare height. I don't know. Do you guys make sense of that? Okay. So um, yeah, but it also isn't that, that um, when you get a, a higher view, you can um, make a, a more fair judgment or whatever. Take in more uh, information to make things make sense more or whatever. Well, what I see here is because I know that they, we have depths in the ocean in which we can't get to. And because they and they are pretty much these sea monsters that are supernatural can get into these places that we can't, we can't get into them. But if you finish the sentence in the high places could mean because it's bare, we could be talking about the literally bottom of the ocean. Cause if finished, the, let's finish. I, I heard they, they um, actually have discovered a massive amount of water in the internal earth. Right. I know. That's where these guys are. All right. Four, fourteen six. And the wild asses did stand in the high places. They snuffed up the wind like dragons. Okay, let's look. They snuffed up the wind. 7307. It says, life, anger, unsubstanti unsubstantiality, by extension, a region of the sky, by resemblance spirit, but only of of a rational being. Let's look at um, what the Greek says. The Greek is always easier. Here it says, um, vain, empty thing. Spirit breathes quickly in animation. Spirit animation. Here's where I'm going to get some of these words make sense when you start looking at the lens of AI, where we're headed. Um, and, and this is where I'm going to, I'll be, this is, this is where I'm heading us towards is looking at how they're going to basically um, try to take us into an AI system. Okay, let's, let's finish Jeremiah. Wait a minute, where am I? Jeremiah 6. The wind, like dragons, 8577, is a marine or land uh, a monster, a sea serpent or jackal. So here's Jeremiah's language, calls them jackals or wild asses. Um, Greek, dragon, serpent, sea monster, dragon, sea or river, or monster, serpent, venomous snake. Clearly there's dragons. Okay, the wind like the dragons, their eyes did fail because there was no grass. Okay, in another area in Isaiah, it talks about their eyes failing because there's no vegetation. Let me see if I can find that in Isaiah. Um, I'll, I'll go looking for that in a minute. Okay, let's go. Let's go here. This is basically the, the depths of the ocean is so dark, you go blind, because there's there's nothing. I mean, it's just so dark. So everything at the bottom of the ocean is blind, and there's no vegetation down there. 
That's what it means. And Isaiah says vegetation, but it talks about their eyes failing. And here it's talking about their eyes failing because there's no grass. Well, first of all, they're not allowed to eat grass. They can only eat us. All right. I'm going to take us now to Ezekiel 29. All right, Ezekiel, uh-oh, 